Hello and welcome to the Canadian SME Small Business Podcast. This is your host Nidhi and we are excited to bring you another episode filled with insights that matter. Our show is dedicated to championing the small businesses that drive our economy forward and enrich our communities. Today we are diving into an important discussion about the evolving retail landscape and how digital solutions are reshaping the way brands, retailers and sales associates interact. Joining us is someone who has been at the forefront of this digital transformation. Yes, we have Steve Gendron with us for this episode. Steve is the co-founder and CEO of Endeavor, a digital retail sales platform that is revolutionizing the industry by bridging the gap between brands, retailers, and sales associate. Steve is a seasoned leader in the retail industry with over 20 years of experience. He began his career by opening a retail store in Montreal, Quebec, and later launched a sales agency managing the distribution of renowned brands like Tom's and Hawaiians. His deep understanding of the industry challenges and opportunities led him to create Endeavor, a platform designed to meet the modern needs of retail through innovative technology. Join us as we explore the future of retail, the changing dynamics of consumer behavior, and how Endeavor is leading the way in digital transformation. Steve, it is great to have you on the podcast today. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you so much for having me. Steve, we are really looking forward to hearing about your journey and the incredible work you are doing with Endeavor. It is a pleasure to have you here uh, to share your expertise and insights with our audience. Uh, Steve, let's talk about your entrepreneurial journey. So let's start talking about your entrepreneurial journey that you have been in the retail industry for over 20 years from opening your own store to founding a digital tra platform that's transforming retail. What inspired you to embark on this journey and how did your experiences in retail led to the creation of Endeavor? Great question. Yeah. So as you called out, I began my career in retail over 20 years ago by opening my first store in uh, 2003 that I sold in 2011. And a few years into that, I, I started my, my sales agency where I was going out, finding brands and helping bring them to the Canadian market. Mm -hmm. uh, so as you mentioned, you know, so fortunate to work with some great brands like Tom Shoes, like Haviana Sandals and dozens of others um, over the course of that career. And it was really that experience that inspired me to start Endeavor. And, you know, I've told this story a million times and it kind of sounds cheesy, but when I had my agency, I effectively looked at my job as being a financial advisor mm -hmm. in that I was going out, I was talking to um, uh, uh, buyers at major change or store owners of independent stores, uh, independent shops across the country, and really saying to them like, hey, you know, in invest $100 in me and I'll turn it into $200 for you. And by that, I mean, give me a PO for $100 and we'll generate $200 in sales for your store. So if I'm really good at doing that, you're going to invest more in me the following year, the following season. But if I'm not, if our product doesn't sell through, you might not invest as much in me or maybe not invest um, yeah. anything at all. So mm -hmm. that was really kind of the, the inspiration for starting this was thinking about all of the ways that I was trying to help support our retail partners and selling our products, helping them increase sell through and just trying to say, Hey, is there a better way to do this? Mm -hmm. So what were uh, some of the biggest challenges you have faced along the way and how did those experiences shape the, the direction of your company? Right. So, you know, what I learned through that business in particular, and even when I had the retail business is that if you do want to be successful at retail, you need to make sure that every employee, anyone who's in a position to influence a purchasing decision, knows your product, knows how to sell it, knows how to look a customer in the eye and tell them all the great things about it. Um, those employees also need to be motivated to sell your product. Yep. They, Absolutely. you know, they need to be excited to, you know, to be pushing it. And of course, as a if you're on the brand side of things, where I was, you need to make sure that you are on brand at every point of sale. Mm -hmm. And really, you know that. All of those things that I just mentioned are so critical, but they're really hard to do at scale. Um, when I had my agency, I would have retailers across all of Eastern Canada, and mm -hmm. I would do my best to, to visit those stores, get FaceTime in. I would drive you know, eight hours with a, a car full of skis or a car full mm -hmm. of shoes and do clinics, education mm -hmm. clinics after the store closed that day 
just to make sure employees knew our products, that were excited about them, knew how to, knew how to sell them properly. But that is a really, really difficult thing to do at scale. You know, mm-hmm. I would have stores in Atlantic Canada that I might see once a year on a good year. And it's not because I didn't want to, it's just because there's only so many hours yeah. in a day and so many times you can get there. So trying to connect once is difficult, trying to stay connected, trying to ensure that you are delivering information and motivation um, all throughout the year is really challenging when you have a wide network. And then when you layer in the fact that turnover at retail, retail employee turnover tends to be pretty high, it's difficult to keep doing it on that ongoing basis as well. You know, you might visit a store and then go visit that same store a few months later and, you know, 25, 30% of the staff has turned over and you're just getting FaceTime with them for the first time. So mm-hmm. really difficult to do these things at scale. And even for the sales incentive, sales contest, you know, on the brand side, we knew they would move the needle. They would mm-hmm. help increase sales, but they're just incredibly hard things to do. You know, you build these campaigns, you um, empower your rep force, people like me to go out and spread the word to the retail yeah. network. You hope the posters get put up in the break room or behind the cash. You hope that the employees saw it and are excited and motivated, but you don't really know until the end of it. So you don't mm-hmm. really get that chance to, um, you know, see if they're being successful, see what you can do to support it. And, and so that was really, you know, some of those aha moments that said, okay, there's got to be a better way to do this. We need to be able mm-hmm. to leverage the fact that everyone working in all those retail stores has a smartphone in their pocket. Yeah. Um, and, and that's how they're used to engaging with brands, how they're engaging with any content, whether that would be education, would be sales incentives. And, and so that's why we built Endeavor. It was really saying, let's now take all of these things that we are doing in an analog offline way and digitize them and actually meet those frontline employees where they, where they are on their smartphones and really give them an incentive that they're looking for things like those instant cash rewards. So instead of waiting three months to get a prepaid visa, we are now allowing brands to reward a frontline employee with an instant cash incentive every single day. Things like free products, discount codes. So all of the things that employees are looking for, we just make it really easy to um, build the content, put it in those those employees' hands, and of course, um, easily reward them uh, for their engagement and participation. See, I must say that it is it is great to hear how your journey evolved from that traditional retail to creating a platform that's refi- that's actually redefining the industry. So, and your story is a testament to the power of innovation in the business. Thank you. So, uh, Steve, it. thank you. Let's talk about the changes in the consumer buying behavior. So, the retail landscape has changed dramatically over the past <clears throat> few years, especially with the impact of COVID nineteen. So the consumer buying behavior has shifted in ways that have required brands to adapt quickly. So can you talk us uh, talk to us a little bit about those changes in consumer buying behavior over the years, particularly pre-COVID, during COVID and post-COVID and why it is so critical for brands to invest in the retail channel? Sure. And so, you know, the little backstory, we actually launched Endeavor effectively at the end of 2019. So right before COVID hit, right which before, is... Uh, yeah. Yeah, not a great time to be launching a retail tech company, but, you know, a really interesting time. And, you know, and that's such a good question. Um, and one, you know, I, I've um, heard before and, and, and such an important one. Um, and it's funny, when I think about that question, one of the things that I think about most is what has actually stayed the same all throughout mm. this period. And it is absolutely true that there was a major shift when COVID hit. Uh, if we were to look back before COVID, the majority of retail transactions occurred at physical retail, occurred at stores. Then, of course, when the pandemic did hit, and I'm not telling you anything you don't already know, yeah. that all changed and it changed overnight. And all of a sudden, we were all forced into this completely digital world. And there are a lot of pundits out there who really said, hey, you know, direct to consumer e commerce has advanced 10 years overnight and it's never coming back. This mm. is the new future and it's, and it's here to stay. Um, and it's funny, I remember doing this interview during COVID and, and speaking to the fact that, hey, you know, we were all just thrust into this fully digital world and how do we feel about it? Yeah. You know, and I'm a, I'm a big skier and I, you know, one of the things that really jumped out at me was that I, I missed going into my local ski shop and mm-hmm. kind of hanging out mm-hmm. with, with the owner and just talking with them and learning mm-hmm. about what is new and exciting. Uh, so while there was that big 
spike, of course, in direct-to-consumer sales um, during the heart of COVID, you know, what we've really seen since is that things have returned back to their normal um, trajectory, where the majority of business still does happen at physical retail. Um, But, you know, over the past 20 years, even before this, what is you know, what we've really seen, of course, with the advent of the internet and, and yeah. e-commerce mm-hmm. is that so much discovery happens online. And that is such a critical thing to remember. So if you're a retailer, you always have to know that the that nearly every single one of the consumers walking into your store, they've done their homework. They've done mm-hmm. their research. Mm-hmm. They, that is where they, they began their buying journey. They are perhaps looking at multiple brands yes. um, and trying to figure out which is the right one for them. Uh, I think we have a stat that says like over 60% of consumers, when they walk into a store, they know they're going in for something, whether Mm -hmm. that is a pair of glasses, a pair of ski boots, a new jacket, whatever it would be, Mm -hmm. but they have not yet decided on a brand. Yes. Um, And that is really critical. And it's so critical because that means the, um, while their discovery happened before they got there, what they're going to actually walk to the cash register with more often than not is going to come down to that sales associate who's serving them, who's helping them finish their buying journey. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, even just <clears throat> personally recently I had an experience where I, I bought a new bike and, and I did my homework. I had a model in mind. I had a type of bike that I thought I needed in mind. Mm-hmm. I chose a store that carried it. I went in looking for it, you know, confident that that was going to be my, um, the model I was going to be walking out <laughs> with. And it turns out I left with a completely different brand, a completely different type of bike. And of course, left with, you know, helmet and shoes and about 10 other things that I also needed. Um, <laughs> but th- that is really reflective of today's uh, consumer journey. You begin your process online. That's where the discovery happens. But you end up finishing that journey in a store. And it is generally a frontline employee who's helping guide you uh, through the final stages of it. Mm-hmm. So you have seen all these changes that has happened, all those shifts that has happened. But how do you see these shifts impacting the relationship between brands and consumers in the long run? So, you know, consumers, I I think, love discovery. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, it's really important for them. They want to find new brands. They want to be introduced to new things. And there's great ways for that to happen online Mm -hmm. and really great ways for that to happen in person, at stores, in real life. And these consumers are also looking for a seamless experience wherever they decide to shop. Uh, So we've seen over the past few years, there have been some brands that really experimented in trying to own the entire experience from discovery straight through to the final purchase themselves. So by that, I mean a massive emphasis on direct consumer with a pullback on wholesale. And, you know, in the, with the benefit of hindsight now, what everyone is seeing is that experiment just didn't work. Yep. Um, and, and it is because retailers play such a critical role in the ecosystem. You know, they offer that opportunity for consumers to discover. They mm-hmm. offer the ability to provide local service, convenience for fulfillment for brands. You know, a lot of great brands do like buy online pickup in store or reserve online pickup in store, whatever it would be. So they are just, you know, so essential for that seamless buying experience that consumers are looking for. So for brands that really do want to be successful, it really is critical that they understand that and that they're investing just in much, uh, just as much, excuse me, in their wholesale channel and in being on brand at every point of sale, everywhere they are represented in a store as they are uh, in their direct to consumer channel. So, uh, Steve, I think it's right to say that understanding these changes is crucial for brands to stay relevant. And your insights help us see the bigger picture of where retail is headed now. We're trying our best for sure. (laughs) So I want to take a moment to connect with our listeners out there. If you are a business owner or someone involved in retail, understanding these shifts in consumer behavior is crucial. The way consumers engage with brands has changed dramatically and staying ahead of these trends is a key to your success. Take a close look at how your customers are interacting with your brand and think about how you can adapt to meet their evolving needs. Steve, let's talk about challenges in educating and motivating retail staff. So one of the key challenges in retail is ensuring that sales associates are well-informed and motivated. This directly impacts customer satisfaction and sales performance, I guess. So what problems does Endeavor solve in terms of educating and motivating retail staff? Yeah, you absolutely nailed it. And 
um, you know, going back to what I was speaking to earlier, this, this major challenge is trying to do it at scale with high frequency. You know, it is really difficult as a brand with, you know, hundreds or perhaps even thousands of points of sale um, mm -hmm. over very large territories to stay connected with those frontline employees who are in that position to influence purchasing decisions. And, you know, for most of our brand clients, about 80% of their business happens in their wholesale channel. So happens with the third party retailer selling their product. Mm -hmm. And as we discussed, so many consumers are walking in without a final brand in mind when they're mm -hmm. looking to make a purchase. So it is those associates at third party retailers who are going to have the greatest impact on that customer's buying journey, on what brand they actually uh, walk to the cash register with. Um, but yes, trying to do that at scale, trying to do that with high frequency is just so incredibly challenging. And it's a problem that every brand faces. You know, brand reps, people like me and what I did in, in my previous life are so critical. And mm -hmm. I just, you know, I want to call out the importance of FaceTime. Like I never um, found anything more beneficial than getting into stores, yes. meeting with the employees, getting them excited about our products. You just can't beat it. Yeah. And we didn't build Endeavor to completely replace that. You know, what we built Endeavor to do uh, was to emphasize that and to amplify that and to make sure that a brand can have those moments, have those connections with those retail employees all year long. Um, so making sure that they're educated every time there's a new product launch or a new product drop, every time there's a great story that you as a brand think, hey, if only everyone working at all of our retail partners knew this story, this would help be so valuable in helping them educate consumers. We make it so easy for a brand to package that, launch it out with targeted distribution and ensure that a sales associate can look the next customer in the eye when they walk in the store tell them that story and guide them on their journey. So really what we're offering here is an amplification for brands going above and beyond what you can do just with direct physical contact and do it all year long. Um, so that is what we're really trying to do here. And again, at the same time, also taking these programs that brands do quite a bit, things like sales contest and just digitizing them and making them so easy to build and launch um, on whatever cadence makes sense for that brand. And now, you know, something that we speak to quite a lot is how brands have, have always had access, well, not always, but over the past 20 years, access to these great um, digital platforms to meet customers online and help mm -hmm. influence the purchasing decisions there. Mm -hmm. And obviously these businesses have done incredible, incredible jobs doing that. Platforms like Google and Facebook. Um, but as I was saying earlier, for most of our brands, the majority of their business still happens at a physical store. So really yeah. how we look at Endeavor is being this platform that allows them to connect with a frontline employee to make sure that they are motivated uh, to help influence a customer's purchasing decision in store where the majority of their business actually occurs. So uh, Steve, how would you say that, how does your platform Endeavor make a difference in the day-to-day -day interactions between sales associates and customers? Um, you know, something that we all know, anyone in retail knows, and I think you even mentioned it earlier, is that a better informed sales associate is going to make uh, yeah. better product recommendations, which is going to improve the customer experience. Mm -hmm. What we also know is that um, better motivated employees who are incentivized correctly are going to do the exact same thing. They are going to be excited about showing up to work every day. They're going to be able to look that customer in the eye, help mm -hmm. guide them on their purchasing journey, and, and make sure that they're getting everything they need. You know, mm -hmm. I told that story before about buying a bike. I didn't go into the store thinking about everything else that I needed, yes, yes. but that sales associate who helped guide me in my journey said, well, what about your pedals? What about, right. you know, you're going to need a Jersey. You're going to need this. You're going to need some new water bottles. Of course. And know uh, if I had just gone in there to say, I'm looking for a bike and I walked out with a bike, probably wouldn't have been a great experience. I probably would have mm -hmm. got home and said, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm halfway there. But having someone who knew how to guide me through my journey and offer that great experience made all the difference in the world. Um, so that is where we are really um, helping create value just by making it so easy for brands and for retailers to make sure that anyone who is in that position to influence a purchasing decision has all the information they need to um, deliver that great experience, that they're motivated um, to, to work hard and make sure that the, the customer is getting everything that they need before they walk out the store. And again, you know, 
doing this at scale is something that is really challenging, really hard for every brand. And that's where we really come in and help facilitate it. So I think it's clear that empowering retail staff with the right tools and knowledge is essential for your success. So an Endeavor's approach seems to bridge this critical gap in the industry. So We're trying our best, yes. That's amazing. So let's pause for a moment to talk to our audience. If you are managing a retail team or involved in training sales associate, you know how it is, how critical it is to keep your staff motivated and informed. The knowledge they bring to the sales floor directly impacts customer satisfaction and sales performance. Think about how you are improving your empowering your team. Are they equipped with the right tools and information to excel? Steve, let's talk about digital connectivity in retail. So the concept of digitally connecting to stakeholders in the retail space, brands, retailers, sales associates, and customers, it is a game game changer. This connectivity can enhance the entire sales uh, retail experience. Can you explain how Endeavor facilitates this digital connection and what brings what benefits it brings to each stakeholder? You bet, yeah. So what we do, and I'll start from the brand side of things, is make it really easy to digitally create all of the things we know on the brand side that can help impact sell through at retail. Um, So that becomes, as I mentioned at the top, our sales incentive programs, our education programs, and what we call our retail ops, helping make sure that you are on brand at every point of sale, that you're merchandised correctly, your displays are set up, et cetera. Um, So those things are critical to help be successful as a brand, as a retailer. It's critical for the entire ecosystem uh, to work properly. So when we think about each stakeholder for brands, what we're really offering them is the ability to help increase sales in their biggest channel, helping get them uh, better data and insight that they never had before that they can then use to help increase uh, revenue with retailers, which not Mm -hmm. only is their biggest channel, but a lot of studies have shown that it's actually their most profitable channel as well. Um, So really providing that insight and giving them the tools they need to increase sell through at every retail partner. Um, From the retailer side of the equation, what we're providing them or what our platform is enabling them to get is a better educated, higher motivated employee who is working harder, um, selling more and and really delivering a better customer experience every single shift uh, because they have the incentive to do so. And, you know, for those frontline employees, Beyond the obvious platform, our our platform provides of giving them access to additional cash rewards, free products and prizes Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in exchange for their hard work every day. It is giving them more confidence. It is giving them higher job satisfaction. And I really, you know, this is anecdotal, but I can't tell you how often I've heard from retailers over the last few years about the impact Endeavor has made in allowing them to find and keep great employees. And it's hard at retail, right? You know, retail traditionally has a high employee turnover as an industry. And, you know, it's just so great to hear from the store managers and store owners about the impact that our platform is having. Um, And it's something that I just personally love is that we can create this win-win-win situation um, that provides all this value for all the key stakeholders in the ecosystem, brands, retailers, and frontline employees. And I guess if I can add a fourth win for consumers as well, because as a consumer, we've all had that experience of, of walking into a store and maybe not having a great experience. And, you know, as consumers, we kind of like to be hard done by. We're, we're going to be upset. We might not go back. We might tell 10 friends about it. Mm-hmm. But when you do walk into a store and you meet that educated sales associate who knows their stuff and can help guide you on your purchasing journey, there's nothing better than that as a consumer. So really we think we're creating value for all of the stakeholders in the ecosystem. And and really we think that's gonna be our key to success here at Endeavor. So what have been some of the most significant outcomes for brands and retailers you have embraced with this digital connectivity? You know, for the brands, you know, I I might uh, uh, sound like I'm on repeat here, but the ability to increase sales and sell through. You know, Mm -hmm. we know from the brand perspective, that when employees, when frontline employees know your products and they understand the benefits of it, they are going to sell more. When they are motivated and incentivized uh, to reach for your products, they're most likely going to sell more of them as well. Um, so really what we have seen with our brands, or with our brand clients, excuse me, is um, this increase in same store sales that we've been able to provide. Um, while 
providing them a great return on their investment. You know, there's a, uh, a terminology used in, in digital marketing called return on ad spend. Mm. And we really created our own acronym of ROAS, which is return on associate spend, really mm. showing the power of a dollar invested in a frontline employee and what that can do to increase sales for your brands. Um, and from the retail side of the equation, kind of going back to what I was just saying, we just, I can't tell you how many times we have heard from retailers how this is helping them find and keep great employees because we're able uh, to facilitate um, those employees getting access to rewards, prizes, benefits that they just wouldn't have been able to provide otherwise. So retailers are, your, you know, we're hearing are using us, using Endeavor um, is even as part of the recruiting process saying, hey, we're going to compensate you with X, but, you know, we've invested in this, we're using Endeavor mm-hmm. and you are going to get access to all these other incredible benefits um, as part of your job here at, at the store. So really, you know, we think that even translates going back to the consumer as well into that better customer experience, you know, with the majority of sales happening in store, especially in categories of products mm-hmm. that we see are sold, not bought, where the consumer does want to be guided on their yes. journey and make sure that they're getting everything they need for the best experience. That is where that educated and motivated frontline employee is going to make all the difference in the world and deliver that great customer experience every single shift. I think it's accurate and right to say that digital transformation in retail is no longer just an option. It is a necessity. And the way Endeavor connects all stakeholders is truly innovative and impactful. 100%. Uh, Steve, let's talk about success stories and impact. So let's uh, shift our focus and talk about the real world impact of Endeavor. You have worked with some impressive brands and achieved remarkable results. Can you share some success stories from your clients and what value they are used they like they have seen using your solution? Sure. Um, my gosh, there's, there's really is so many, you know, when I think about how things used to be kind of prior to Endeavor, when I was on the brand side of things, you know, it was really in an analog world. And, um, you know, I mentioned driving store to store to store to do clinics. And to say it again, I love that. And I don't think there's a substitution for it. You cannot beat getting FaceTime in with uh, frontline employees when you're on the Mm -hmm. brand side of things. But it's difficult to do at scale. It's really challenging to do at scale. Running these programs, the sales incentive programs, we know they have an impact. We know they move the needle, but they are difficult to do. And once you launch them, you kind of sit there with your fingers crossed, hoping they're going to be successful. So really what we've heard from so many of our brand clients um, is, you know, at the very start of things, just how easy it is to launch these programs, which they know are going to have an impact. We all know on the brand side of things that a better educated frontline employee is going to sell more product. Mm -hmm. Um, We know that a better incentivized frontline employee is going to sell more product doing these things is really challenging. So from that brand perspective, being able to make it very easy to build these programs, get them live with targeted distribution um, is something that we've heard from the brands has just made such uh, a difference in their, uh, in their operating model. You know, we've taken tasks that have, you know, required this much work and brought it down to here, all while providing them with a measurable um, uh, return on investment providing them with real data and real insight that they can then use to help increase or drive even more sales with their retail channel. Mm-hmm. Um, so really, you know, I, I mentioned ROAS before from the uh, yep. brand side of things from a digital marketing perspective and some great return on ad spend for digital marketers can be three to one, four to one. So effectively, you know, $4 in revenue for your every dollar investment. We're providing brands with a ROAS, our return on associate investment, our associate spend, excuse me, of returns of like 30, 35 to one. We're saying to them and showing to them like, hey, it's it's so important for you as a brand to meet customers everywhere, to have this seamless experience um, across anywhere where a customer might interact with your brand. But um, as the majority of your sales are happening in your wholesale channel with retailers, really what we're saying is, hey, take some of those marketing dollars that you've invested in Facebook and Google and, and, and those platforms and invest them in the frontline employee who's talking to a consumer every day. And now for the first time ever, really be able to measure and quantify 
uh, the success of that investment. So that is really something special, something we've seen uh, and heard from our brand partners that has just made um, such a difference for them. So not only making it easy to get these programs off the ground, reducing the amount of time it takes, but providing them with data and insight and actual outcomes that are uh, outstripping other initiatives that they've ever done. From the that retail side of the coin, you know, getting that better educated employee, that mm -hmm. better incentivized employee on someone else's dime is really powerful. Mm -hmm. You know, I spoke earlier to driving store to store to store and yes. doing clinics and kind of, you know, giving pizza and prizes and whatnot. You know, that was an, an investment that I made because I knew it was going to be critical uh, to help increase sales of my brand at that store. I knew if sales associates knew our product, they would sell more of it. Yes. Um, but it was the retailer that made the investment and in having their employees stay after the after they lock the doors at the end of the day um, mm -hmm. and listen to me talk about my products for a couple hours. So what we are providing retailers is that ability to get a better educated employee, to get a better motivated employee mm -hmm. while allowing the brand to make the investment because they know how critical it is for their success. Um, so really, you know, we just heard time and time again, and, and I know I mentioned earl it earlier from the retailer side of thing, and even if it's anecdotal about the impact that we are having for retailers in being able to find and keep great employees. Mm -hmm. That was a challenge long before COVID. Yep. It became obviously, you know, nearly impossible during it and has remained a major challenge for retailers ever okay. since. So hearing that we are having such an incredible impact in helping them find and keep uh, great employees is really special for us. Then how do you measure the success of these partnerships like that you have built over the years and what key metrics have like are you most proud of? You know, some of the stuff I spoke to earlier is definitely stuff we're proud of. The incredible return on investment that we're able to provide brands, that data and the visibility that we are able to provide them for the, for the first time, that directly provide them for the first time is really special. Um, the same store increase in sales that we hear from brands. You know, what's unique about our platform is we allow them to run programs in their wholesale channel with retail partners like they are used to doing in the digital world where they would run a b uh, a b test marketing campaigns you know try a different version of it here uh, versus over there and see what the impact is we are giving brands the ability to do the exact same things run an incentive program with this group of stores run a slightly different program yeah. with a different group of stores and measure the success and iterate on each of them to make sure uh, you can have the the greatest impact so you know hearing from brands and, and um and having them tell us about the impact our platform is having in increasing same store sell through is really incredible. And that just benefits everyone in the ecosystem, which is probably something I think I'm the most proud of. I, I love the fact that our platform creates this win, 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 a win for the brands, a win for the retailers, a win for those hardworking frontline employees. And I suppose if I could add a fourth win to it, uh, a win for the consumer as well, yeah. you know, consumers who are, taking the time to drive to a store, look for parking, you know, go in. They're doing so because they're, they're looking for guidance. They're looking yes. for someone to provide them expert advice to help them finish their buying journey. And as consumers, we've, we've all been there. We've all had the experience of walking Absolutely. to a store and not getting that. But at the same time, we've all had that experience of just meeting someone who knew their stuff, was able to help guide us on their journey and how good that felt. So really, I think one of the special things about our platform is that ability to provide a win-win-win-win with both quantifiable, uh, quantifiable uh, data and insight and statistics, um, as well as just you know the, the the great ability to to make the experience so much better for um, the consumer as well. Steve, I must say that these success stories highlight the tangible benefits of your platform. It is so inspiring to see how Endeavor is making a difference in the retail industry. So before we wrap up, uh, Steve, do you have any final advice for our listeners, especially those in the retail industry looking to adapt and thrive in this rapidly changing environment? Um, yeah, great question. You know, Really what I would say is that if you want to be successful, whether you are a brand or whether you are a retailer, is invest in the frontline employees. Um, you know, it is just so critical uh, for, uh, for them to be educated, for them to be motivated and excited um, 
for you to be successful, whether you mm -hmm. are a brand or whether you are a retailer. Um, so make that investment, make sure that those frontline employees have all the information they need uh, to deliver a great customer experience every single shift and make sure that they are incentivized properly and motivated. And I think if you can do that as a brand and retailer, you're going to get the results you're looking for. You are going to increase your sales. You are going to increase customer satisfaction. And that really creates a win for everyone. Thank you so much, Steve, for joining us today and sharing your insights on the evolving retail landscape and how Endeavor is driving, uh, driving innovation. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks. We have covered a lot of ground from consumer behavior changes to the importance of digital connectivity in retail. The key takeaway from today's discussion is that staying ahead in retail requires innovation, adaptability, and a deep understanding of consumers' needs. We would like to extend our gratitude to our partners, our exclusive banking partner, RBC, our exclusive shipping partner, UPS, our exclusive email partner, Constant Contact, our exclusive hospitality partner, IAG, Hotels and Resorts, and our tech partner, Google. Don't forget to subscribe to the Canadian SME Small Business Magazine by visiting our official website, www.canadiansme.ca. Thank you for listening, and we will see you in the next episode.